שלום. We will say a few דברי תורה. For the parasha that's coming up, in this coming Shabbat, we will read parashat שלח לך. שלח לך אנשים. Which is the famous story that describes the sin of the spies who went to spy out the land of Israel. When the Jewish people left Egypt, And finally, they reached the frontier with the land of Israel, and here starts a new commotion. A very disappointing commotion, a sin. What was the sin of the spies? The Torah says, Medaber Hashem el Moshe lemor, שלח לך אנשים ויתורו את ארץ כנען. God spoke to Moses and he said, send out men for yourself. Which means God says, Moshe, that's what you want, to go and check the land that I promised to give you. It's not my decision. Let it be your decision. That's the way God does with everything that has to do with free will. That's what you want? Whether it's good or bad, if that's what you want, go ahead, do it. Later, of course, you will have to pay for the outcome. But in the meantime, שלח לך אנשים. That's what you want? Go ahead. Of course, it's not what, you, what Moses wanted. But the pressure of people. People started to complain. Where are we going now? Are we going to a land? We don't know. What kind of land is it? Is it a good land to survive in it? What about the people? What about the, their, their, their strength? We have to check all this. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, usually people, that's the way they behave. That's the way they, they do. But in this case, It brought about the worst of the worst. So Moses made that mistake. And he sent them. He had no other choice. He said, that's what you want? Go ahead. He chose 12 people. 10 of them were the princes of the Jewish people. Of each tribe. And also Yehoshua, the famed and loyal servant of Moshe, and with him also Kalev, the son of Yefune. Go ahead and check the land. And the rest, the story is known. We are not going to dwell with it. The point is that when they came back, they ruined all the feeling about having such a marvelous gift from God, that enthusiasm, that pleasure, that, that kind for which they waited for and they anticipated to have, suddenly it was ruined. And God above is listening. What's going on? So the people started, the, 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 the ten people, the ten spies, started to describe what's going on in the land. The land of Israel, the land of Canaan, yeah, it's a good land. We don't say it's not a good land. We have seen there fruits, gigantic fruits, big fruits. But we have seen also other things. We have seen that the people there are giants. Not only that, they are surrounded with walls. I mean, uh, There are people who, who have tremendous strength. If they fight, will we be able to fight them? Apparently, all the goods that this land creates and brings out, it's because in accordance with the nature of people who live there. It's not our nature. What are we going to do? Well, first they started by saying how good is the land. And that's usually 
the way when someone wants you to listen to a lie. So he begins first by telling you some of the truth. And the world and the Jewish people there. Of course, among them was the, those whom we call Erev Rav, the people who joined them from the land of Egypt. And in fact, they were, they were the kind of people who caused so much terrible things to the Jewish people at that time. But the rest, the true Jewish people, stood there listening and doing nothing about it. That's why they were considered like if they all committed the same crime. What is the crime? Talking about a gift that was given to us with love as promised by God to, the, to our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And God sees at, at, at that gift as being ruined. This is the gift I wanted to give them. And now they are, they, they are doing such a treatment to it. The Midrash, the Midrash Rabbah puts it in, in these words. Mashal lemahad davar dome. There's a parable. Lema Israel hayu domim. The Jewish people then, they were compared to what? Lemelech shezimen livno ishana'a. There was a king, and he prepared, and the king went and he fetched a beautiful woman for his son to marry. And this woman, not only she was beautiful, she was the daughter of many good people, you know, with pedigree, rich people, and no, he could not find a better woman than this one. And then the son says to his father, Father, I would like first to go and see her. I'm, I'm not sure. I have to go to see her. Which means he does not believe very much in the promise of his father. The king, his father, was, was very much overtaken by that. Why? He felt bad. The father felt hurt. Amar Aviv, he said, What should I do? If I say to him, no, I will not show, I will not show her to you, then so he would certainly say, ah, he doesn't want to show me the girl because she is probably very ugly or who knows what else. That's why my father doesn't want to show her to me. At the end, the father said to him, okay, my son, go ahead. Look at her. This way you will know that I was not lying to you. But because you did not believe in me, well, I promised, the king promises, Go ahead and look at her. But I promise you, I will not bring her into your house. I shall bring her to your son, not to you. That's the, those are the words of the Midrash. The king, of course, is the king of kings, Akadosh Baruch Hu. And when he saw that his marvelous gift that he was going to give to the Jewish people, the land of Israel, upon which the Torah says, Tovah Aretz Me'od Me'od, and the land is extremely good, very, very, very good. And yet, to treat my gift in such a way, God became angry. It teaches us many things, by the way. One has to be very careful. Even when you, when you receive a gift that is not much, you still have to show respect and, and appreciation to the one who gave it to you. Only the chatsuf, the most insolent, the, most, the people without any politeness are the, the kind of people that will behave in a very negative way regarding that. That's exactly what happened to the Jewish people, to those 10 people who came back with such a report. And of course, it ruined the, the enthusiasm of the Jewish people altogether. Entirely they started to say, no, how can we go there? The land is not for us. Imagine being the place of God. What would you feel? Especially 
that God showed them so many great miracles. The ten plagues in Egypt. He took them out from Egypt. He brought them to the mountain of Sinai. He brought down his divine presence. He spoke to Moses and his voice was heard by all of them. And he gave him the Torah to bring to the people of Israel. And then now on the way to go to the land of Israel, the gift that God promised, they should ruin it in such a way. I mean, even us small people, when we, we give a gift and the gift, we, 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 we feel that the gift has not been appreciated, it hurts. So now imagine uh, what it means when it comes to God himself. There's no question that, uh, I mean, you don't have to look at many commentaries and there are many explanations and there are many, many commentaries on those things to explain what happened really. But look at the story as it is literally. And you'll find out that this is atrocious. Now, Kalev, the son of Yefune, and Yehoshua were not among the people who have been cursed by the Almighty because of this. Why? Because what was the curse? The curse that God gave to the people because of what happened. He said them, he said to them, as the king said to his son, I will not, I will show you the gift, but you will not have it. Only your son. Same thing also with the Jewish people. He says, Hi Ani, that's a big oath that God has taken upon himself, that you will not see my land, the land that I will give you. I promise you, you will stay in the wilderness for more than four years. And you will never see the land. Who will see it? Who will go in? Your children. Those who were not born in Egypt. Those who did not come out from Egypt. Those who were born in the wilderness. They are the ones. Because they did not participate in the sin. So they will go into the land of Israel. Because after this sin began. The time of four years in the wilderness. Because they were able, they were going to, to, to go into the land of Israel after 11 days in accordance with the teachings of the Torah and our sages. Instead, the curse was that they would remain in the wilderness going from one place to another until after 40 years, no one who came out from the land of Egypt was alive anymore. We know that all of them perished. Every Tisha B'Av, on the night of Tisha B'Av, every night like this, they would, they would dig a grave for each one of them. They would sleep in it, and in the morning, most of them would get up and find out that many of them did not. According to our sages, 15,000 of people died every night then. By the end of the four years, no one of them remained alive except their children who were born in the desert after the sin of the spies. Now, we have to understand the land of Israel, the Torah, so I was saying that Kalev, the one who was not included among the Miraglim because Kalev said only good things, as well as Yehoshua, the servant of Moshe. Those two people also went into the land of Israel, even though they were the ones who came out from Egypt. So they were not included in the, that great, that terrible decree upon the, the people of Israel. Why? Number one, Yehoshua. Yehoshua was the servant of Moshe. You cannot expect him to fall into the trap of that kind of criminal criminality. Nevertheless, you don't know. The pressure of society is very great. So what did Moshe do? Out of fear that Yoshua, his most precious servant and, uh, and pupil, that he shouldn't fall into the same trap, he prayed for him. And he added to him the letter Yud. Instead, it, his name was before that, was Hoshea. Now it will be Yehoshua. Our sages explained, Yah Yoshiacha me Avonam Raglim, which means he prayed for Yehoshua, 
that the, the Almighty God represented by the letter Yud and immediately the He that follows is already in the name of Yehoshua and that means may God protect you from the counsel or the advice of the spies. Moshe was afraid. So Yehoshua, thank God, was not, was unscathed. Means, thank God, he did not sin. What about Kalev? Kalev was a psychologist, was a, one of the princes of Israel also, and he got up. First he made everyone go silent. Shh! He said, I have something to say about whom? About Ben Amram. Ben Amram is Moses. It's not nice to call Moses Ben Amram. There is a rule. If you call someone by the name of his family, without any, any precedent, nothing, you just call him, hey, you don't say even sir. You call him by the last name, it's a degradation of the character of the, this, this, this human being. It's not nice. Either you call him by his first name, or you, you say to him, Mr. So-and-so, Monsieur So-and-so. But you don't call just the last name. It's a kind of very, very degrading way to address someone. But when Kalev, what is the psychology that was behind Kalev when he said that? Because after he heard the, the, the people there were already, already without their mind, so he said, there is only one way that I could get them to be quiet, to let me talk. Because they won't let me talk if I just tell them that the land is good because they were afraid they would be stoned to death at that time. The commotion was so, so big. So what did he say? Yahas Kalev et Amle Mor, the Torah says. And he, he, he said, shh, tas. what's the matter? He says, I want to say things about Ben Amram. Ah, he wants to say probably bad things about Moshe Now That's what we want to hear. But now, instead of, of telling things that, uh, that would please the crowd, he said to them, we went to this land, and the land is beautiful. You're afraid of the people there? Of course they are gigantic and big, but they are our bread. We can eat them like bread. Why? Because Hashem itanu altira'um, God is with us. Don't be afraid. But me'alem, but God is not with them. So therefore, their image of God is not with them anymore. So we can win very easily. Of course, they didn't listen to him. But God saw that Kalev is one, a good man. And therefore, he had the merit to go into the land of Israel and to become one of the kings of Israel, as we know, according to the Bible, that uh, Kalev was given the city of Hebron, where he prayed according to the Midrash of our sages. And at the same time, he became the king one day. Why not? He proved himself. Whereas the rest of the people, as we said, were given that curse and never saw the land of Israel. What did he say, Kalev? Tova ha'aretz me'od me'od. The land is good, good, good. It's very seldom when the Torah says about something me'od, me'od, twice me'od. Me'od is already very much. Another me'od, another very much, that to the extreme. So saying that the land is excellent, is great in every facet. So he said the words me'od, me'od. A question that people can ask are very evident. Especially today. In our generation, we are now in the land of Israel. God, in 1948, gave in our hands, in the hands of our great army, God bless them, the land of Israel. We came back to the land of Israel. In 67, we came back to Jerusalem, to the land of our forefathers. How gracious God is. 2,000 years we haven't seen our land. And now we are back. You could always ask the question, first, what is so good about this land? Better than Paris? Better than France? Better than America? The 
Torah says apparently the, the Torah did not say America Tov Me'od. The Torah says the land of Israel is good, Tova Ha'aret Me'od Me'od. When the Torah specifies a declaration like this, that like this, you have to be careful how to analyze the words. Number one, the literal meaning is if you want, you could see in the land of Israel only good. Because the truth is that the land of Israel is good all the way. Nothing is bad. Now, many people of you will say, come on, what are you talking about? We well, you know Israel is not easy. Many times people ask me the question, Rabbi, do you think also that it's the time now to immigrate to Israel? You think it's good for me to immigrate? What am I going to say, my poor me? Whatever I say will, will be on my account. So usually I said to a friend of mine who asked me this question, I said to him, uh, listen, can you make a living in Israel? You had a profession or something that you could do with which to make money, then come, why not? Very good time. Apparently this is the time that seems to be in accordance with the prophecies and the predictions, it seems to be the best time to come to the land of Israel. I mean, there is a rampant uh, anti-Semitism going on in the world. The world is not safe anymore for the Jews and, 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 and the situation of, the, of this terrible calamity that we call Corona. Maybe it's time really to go to Israel, but don't come if you have no way to make a living. You don't have, you are not sure if you will make a good living or not. Stay where you are. That's my usual advice. The rest is up to them, of course. The land of Israel is always good. The problem is this, what about us? It's us who always find it difficult to find whatever is good. That which is very good has to be analyzed and find out. And usually, if you check too much, like the, the, the spies, when they went to check, there was the so only bad. Even the good that they said was attributed to the bad. So the same thing also. It happens to me. I'm not saying this, that it doesn't happen to me. Many times I am disappointed and I am in Israel, thank God. But I am very happy to be, to be in the land of Israel. A few years ago when I was still in America, one day we decided to come back after a generation, a whole generation in America. Finally we decided how? We left everything behind and we came back to, to our house in Israel. And we are happy to have made this decision. Many times when I go back to the States and uh, uh, friends and rabbis who see me, they say, Rabbi, how did you have, what kind of merit do you have that you had the zikhut to go to the land, to immigrate to the land of Israel? I say to them, I don't know if it is a zikhut or not. I don't know if it is a merit or not. All I know is, when the time came, I said to myself, leave everything behind, don't look back, and then go. Because if you start speculating how is the land, how is not the land, you are not going to, 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 to decide anything positive. So therefore we came. Today we enjoy ourselves. Of course we don't make as much money as we did in America. No question about it that America is beautiful. No question about it that America is so more polite, so more disciplined. Because in Israel, when we come to Israel, we find many times that discipline is lacking, politeness is ça laisse à désirer, c'est pas tellement bien, it's not so great. And uh, in order to solve any problem in Israel would demand a lot. Because here they have uh, an expertise to make uh, out of a problem another problem instead of solving it. But if you look at things literally, of course it's not easy. The land of Israel, as, as the Torah says, Asher Avaneha Barzel, I mean, it, not only its uh, stones are uh, like iron, but Baneha too, I mean their children, those who, who come to live in Israel, they become, or their character also changes. In a way, it becomes harder. Why? It's possible that uh, life is a little bit harder in, in the land of Israel because we don't go in depth into what we see. 
our sages said, May de Avid Rahmana Letab Avid. Whatever Hashem does is always for the best. What do you mean? I would like to understand this literally. The point is, for example, question number one. If the land is so good, why is it that only after 2,000 years of exile, persecutions, and terrible things that happen to the Jewish people, finally we have the land of Israel? Thank you. Maybe that's the only land that's left that can, uh, that can uh, take us. No, the answer is, 2,000 years were required to, to look upon the land of Israel with depth, to see, to appreciate. What was our sin? The sin of the Jewish people was the lack of appreciation. Therefore, the only way to gain the land of Israel is by learning to appreciate it. You appreciate the good and you appreciate the bad. Why? Because the bad is also good. Let me allow me to tell you a little explanation that I said to myself. I'm not saying that this is it, but it could be accepted. You see the Torah in our parasha it says that it says Tova Aretz Meod Meod, as we said before. The land of Israel is good and good. Why twice the word good? So my mind brought me back to the beginning of the Torah where it says, when God created the world, Bayar Elohim et kol asher tov me'od. And God saw everything that he created, that he did, that it is good, very good. Our sages explained, good is for the good inclination. Good. But very good is the evil inclination. You know, of course this requires a whole lecture, but I'll tell you in a Fiji. The evil inclination is the reason for being in this planet Earth. Because the evil clina- uh, inclination provides us with the possibility to, to do things according to our free will. That's the reason why God created this world. The evil inclination brings a temptation. Now, if it is forbidden, then you have to overcome it. You overcome it, very good then you are successful. Why? Because you have left, you you let your free will decide and you decided for good. What caused you to be in such greatness? Bad. The bad caused you to see what is good in it. That's why the Torah says, and I see that this, this world is very good, very good. Same thing also I say, If you allow me, the land of Israel. Of course, there is plenty of good in the land of Israel. But there is also things that are, I will not say bad, but difficult. Many times you come, for example, for signing papers. Outside the land of Israel, nothing easier to do than that. You come to Israel, can I send, sir, can I sign this? Let me just sign. Okay, let me see. Ah, it's not good signature. Go ahead and do it again. Everything goes this way. A problem creates another problem in Israel. Not always, but sometimes. Of course, there are many people who are very sweet in, in the land of Israel. Depending on the character. But those who are rough, because of stress, there is a lot of stress, no question about it. But we have to remember that stress is also good. It's not good, by the way. Not good to be... When you have stress, remove it. Try to do... Look at the Mesilat Yesharim, what it says. When you see that it's coming into you, well, get up and remove it from you, from yourself. Do anything to dispense with it. So, in Israel, of course, obviously there are many good things. But you know what is the nature of people. The only thing that draws their... Uh, Judgment is whatever is, it seems to be not good. So, if one will learn to see what is good in that which we call bad, they will find it very good in accordance with what God created. That's the reason why we didn't, we were not in the land of Israel for a long time. 
so that we can build up the longing for the land of Israel. For 2,000 years we have been reciting every day, three times a day, in the silent prayer, that we want to come back to the land of Israel and bring back the divine presence there. That has aggrandized in our heart, in our psyche, in our conscience, the longing for the land of Israel. That's what God wants. Of course, now the land of Israel is in our hands. Many people don't appreciate that. I don't know if we appreciate all the time. Many times we are disappointed. Why? Because our nature uh, forces us not to break our free will. Our free will, sometimes we are not successful to choose the right way. You want to choose the, the right way? Look only upon the good. Because the land of Israel is Tova Haaretz Me'od Me'od. The land of Israel is good and very good. The very good is about that which is negative because it's going to help you to make it positive. It's not easy to understand what I'm saying, but it's, it's important to look upon it and to think about it because I live it every day. Many times I'm disappointed. Even when you go to a doctor, it's not like you go to the doctor in America when it's nice, polite, and everything. Here, the doctor, it's possible that if he's not your friend, for example, he might be ferocious against you. Sit down. Open your... Uh, and, uh, let me see, what, what is the problem with you? Tell me what is your problem. That's what happened to me. Instead, I smiled. I said, that's Israel. You see, our sages said in the Zohar, Akadosh, in the Holy Zohar, the land of Israel is holy. The more holiness there is, the more the forces of evil and the forces of the negative forces, they like also to come and adhere to that where a lot of holiness comes out. And that's why that, that what makes the people change the people. The character of, of people change, but the inside of the people is great. And everything that is difficult in Israel is in order to make you appreciate the land of Israel. Tovaha aretz me'od me'od. The land of Israel is good, extremely good. Let's hope and pray that in our time, in our days to come, we shall see that this is not just a prophecy, that this is reality. When the Mashiach will come, when the redemption is completed, then we are going to see how this land is a land of milk and honey in any kind of explanation. Shabbat Shalom.